It's 4 in the afternoon on Friday, September 12th here in Korea. Thanks for tuning in. Live from Seoul, I'm Na Hyun Gyung. We begin with the compensation hearing that is currently taking place here in Seoul. It's brought by a state-run health agency against the nation's biggest tobacco companies. And it comes a day after the government announced hike to hike cigarette prices. And given the timing, all eyes are on how the $52 million lawsuit will unfold. Our Shin se starts us off. The trial of the National Health Insurance Service versus the nation's largest tobacco manufacturers is currently underway, one day after the government announced plans to nearly double cigarette prices starting next year. The public organization is seeking compensation from KTNG Corporation, Philip Morris Korea, and British American Tobacco Korea to recover medical costs incurred due to what the agency claims are tobacco related diseases such as lung cancer. The organization is confident they can prove the casual relationship between smoking and the illnesses using 19 years of medical records in its database. The agency says the data will prove that the occurrence of cancer in smokers is much higher than in non-smokers. It also aims to show that the tobacco companies violated laws in failing to fully explain the addictive and hazardous chemicals that are present in their products. The tobacco companies in defense are expected to argue that they can't be held responsible for the choices of individuals to smoke or not smoke and that they have done what was legally required of them to warn the public about the dangers of smoking. It's a $52 million lawsuit that could open the floodgates for similar suits if the National Health Insurance Service wins. It would also signify a rare loss for Big Tobacco, which successfully defended itself earlier this year against seven individual plaintiffs who were seeking compensation over claims that will resemble the ones in this trial. The public agency, however, feels that its case is much stronger. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Now, people are still divided on whether the government's plan of hiking cigarette prices will be effective in cutting the country's smoking rate. Some call it a government attempt to rake in more tax revenues. Our Song ji has more. More than half the current price of cigarettes goes to the government in the form of taxes. The latest hike proposal would up that percentage even more by 10 percentage points. That's because a new tax category has been introduced towards cigarettes, the individual consumption tax, which would make up about 13% of the new price for a pack. The individual consumption tax is typically levied for luxury items like fur coats or casino entrance fees. But cigarettes are more commonly consumed by the public, and the changes are expected to place a burden on households with smokers. The cigarette price hike is expected to raise consumer prices by 0.6 percentage points. Under the assumption that consumer prices will rise by 3 percent each year, the Korea Institute of Public Finance says the price for a pack of cigarettes would be double what it is now in five years' time. By the year 2025, the price will be close to $6. It will also equal a windfall for tax revenue for the government. If the changes take effect, the government will rake in an estimated $2.7 billion in additional taxes. The question remains whether the measures will make it through the next few months amid criticism that the price increase will have a greater effect on people in the low-income bracket. Finance Minister Choi Kyung-hwan has attempted to downplay those concerns by saying that the additional tax revenue will be funneled back toward improving the livelihoods of the public and enhancing the nation's safety and health infrastructure. Song ji Arirang News. The 69th UN General Assembly will convene next Tuesday at UN headquarters in New York. The general debate will open a week later along with a UN Security Council summit hosted by U.S. President Barack Obama. Now, many topics will be on the summit table, including the growing threat of Islamic State militants and North Korea's human rights violations. President Park Geun-hye will be among the world leaders giving speeches at the General Assembly. Her keynote address on the 24th will Center around the seeking international support for her vision of a peaceful reunification of the Korean Peninsula. North Korean Foreign Minister Lee Soo-yong is also scheduled to give a speech, which will mark the first ministerial-level address by the North in 15 years. 
A senior North Korean diplomat reportedly held talks with Europe's chief envoy on human rights. Radio Free Asia reports that Kang Seok-ju, Pyongyang's secretary for international affairs, met with Stavros Lambrinidis, the EU special representative for human rights, sometime this week. During the talks, Lambrinidis reportedly expressed grave concerns about North Korea's dire human rights situation. Kang is currently on a five-nation tour that includes stops in Germany, Belgium and Switzerland. Lambrinidis is said to be the only EU official to have met with Kang. Now, despite North Korea's detainment of three American nationals, foreign tourism in the North has reportedly increased by 20 percent in the first half of this year. That's according to a pro-North Korea newspaper in Japan. The number of European travelers in particular is on the rise. Beijing-based Korea Tours estimates up to 6,000 European tourists travel to Pyongyang annually. Now, this comes as North Korea heavily promotes hiking, cycling, golfing, and even skiing trips to attract more visitors to the country. But tour operators do admit that the number of American travelers has dipped since two of their citizens were arrested in Pyongyang in April. A high-level three-way meeting between Korea, China and Japan took place in Seoul for the first time in 10 months on Thursday. There, the three neighbors agreed to improve relations strained over historical and territorial disputes. Our Hwang Sung-hee has this report. Amid deepening diplomatic friction, senior officials from Korea, China and Japan met in Seoul Thursday, seeking fresh momentum in their trilateral cooperation. Divided over historical and territorial issues, the three neighbors have not held a summit since last year and met Thursday at Korea's request. The Republic of Korea has made strenuous efforts to resolve such a situation, either by hosting related meetings or by suggesting various constructive alternatives with a sense of duty to continue working toward keeping and reinforcing the three countries have expanded exchanges in areas such as economy, trade and culture over the past 15 years, but regional roads are hampering further growth. At the same time, our cooperation has seen difficulties and setbacks, which affected the general atmosphere of the trilateral cooperation. Each country's chief diplomat agreed the next trilateral meeting should be conducted at a higher level to secure further progress in their cooperation. Uh, we uh, uh, did uh, have a meeting line that uh, this must be followed up by uh, the political level uh, for the ministers and uh, ultimately uh, the, uh, the supreme leaders. But despite their agreement on this, the three officials failed to shake hands on when, where and how the much-delayed summit will take place. Hwang sang Arirang News. There were expectations that the nation's key interest rate may be cut again following last month's decision to lower it by 25 basis points. Contrary to those expectations, the central bank decided to keep it unchanged. But as our Hwang ji reports, another rate cut may be coming before the end of the year. The Bank of Korea has chosen to take a wait-and-see approach to judge the impact of last month's rate cut. It decided to leave the key rate steady at 2.25 percent in September following its monthly monetary policy meeting on Friday. Last month's rate cut, the first since May last year, came as the government unveiled a set of aggressive stimulus measures to boost growth. The government has been expressing concerns that the Korean economy might fall into Japan-style stagnation. 
Pundits say, however, that the bank could lower the rate once more before the year is out. They cite recent government pressure to join efforts aimed at boosting growth. Finance Minister Che Kyung-hwan said earlier this week that the recovery is still feeble and an expansionary fiscal and monetary policy should support growth for a while. When asked about the European Central Bank's recent decision to cut its rate to a record low, Che said the European Bank had taken a preemptive measure against global economic risks. He added that Korea is also easily swayed by global economic conditions. Che's comments have raised concerns over the Bank of Korea's independence. The central bank governor has said, though, that the bank does not make decisions that stand opposed to its assessment of current economic conditions. Hwang Jie, Arirang News. Now, Finance Minister Choi Kyung-hwan says Korea's economic recovery remains sluggish, and that statement is echoed in the Finance Ministry's monthly Green Book report released on Friday. The domestic economy is showing signs of improvement amid stabilizing prices and employment, but the pace of recovery remains weak. The report adds investment sentiment and domestic consumption have yet to show signs of stabilization. It also cites the tapering of stimulus measures in the U.S. and political instability in the Middle East as external factors that could affect the nation's economy. So the overall economy may be weak, but this year's extended five-day Chuseok holiday, which ended this past Wednesday, proved to be an economic boon for domestic retailers. Emart, the country's largest retailer, says sales jumped nearly 5 percent compared to the Chuseok holiday in 2013 and by more than 10 percent compared to the year before that. Sales of department stores also saw a boost. Lotte department store says sales spiked more than 84 percent this Chuseok from the figures in 2011. Now, this year's holiday was the first since the so-called substitute holiday system was implemented, where Koreans got an extra day off of work because part of it fell on the weekend. And in the nation's job market, Korea's unemployment rate edged down 0.1 percentage point on month to 3.3 percent in August. This as the nation's manufacturing and service sectors peaked up momentum after a sluggish start to the summer. Now, the number of new jobs went up for the second straight month, reaching nearly 26 million last month. That's roughly 600,000 more than the same month last year. More positions opened up in the manufacturing, retail and service fields, but job creation was down in the financial, agricultural and fisheries sectors. And shifting gears, Korean students often leap at the chance to study abroad in large part to make themselves more appealing in the globalized world we live in. But our Connie Kim says the global education they seek may be right under their noses. Get all the benefits of studying abroad without ever having to leave Korea. Two additional foreign universities have opened at the Incheon Global Campus in Korea's western port city. It's part of the Incheon Free Economic Zone's plan to house competitive universities from around the world. Utah University and Belgium's Ghent University began classes earlier this month. They joined State University of New York and George Mason University. Studying the same curriculum receiving the same diploma, and having the opportunity to study at their foreign university's main campus for one school year is what's luring an increasing number of Korean students. It's a unique uh, experience where students get to interact with uh, you know, exchange students from the main campus, and we're able to study with actual uh, professors from the main campus that are actually well experienced and very knowledgeable. The strategy came about in part because Seoul sends more students to the U.S. than any other city in the world. Data shows more than 56,000 students from the Korean capital went to the U.S. to study for degrees between 2008 and 2013. But will the Incheon Global Campus be able to stem the flow of young Korean talent leaving the country for their further education? The Songdo Global Campus offers students a diverse set of unique experiences, but pundits say it still has a number of challenges to address before it can ascend the ranks among would-be college students. 
In order to retain talented Korean students, the key is to bring in universities with high name value. As of now, not many of the schools in Songdo are world-class universities. It's also important to balance out the proportion of foreign and local students. The Incheon Global Campus wants to increase the number of global universities from 4 to 10 by 2025. School officials say their future success will ultimately depend on the quality of institutions they're able to attract. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Bringing you the fresh updates from stories breaking in Korea and abroad. We give you a bigger and better picture of the world. Join Na Hyung Young live from Seoul every weekday only on Arirang. As the White House prepares for another long-term struggle against terror, Americans across the country honor the nearly 3,000 people killed in the 9-11 attacks 13 years ago. The New York Stock Exchange was replaced by a moment of silence at the start of the trading day on Thursday at the site of the World Trade Center's Twin Towers in Lower Manhattan. The names of the people killed were read out by relatives in what has become an annual ritual. Now, a silver bell was rung to mark the times when each of the four planes hijacked by Al Qaeda militants crashed and the towers fell. And in a private ceremony at the Pentagon, President, Pre President Barack Obama honored the resilience of the surviving family members and the American people, saying that the country grows stronger despite the quote unquote small, hateful minds that conspire to break their spirit. In the Middle East, 10 Arab nations pledged to join Washington's fight against Islamic State militants. Retired U.S. Marine General John Allen is said to be coordinating the efforts in Syria and Iraq. Our Kwon Soa has this report. President Obama's broad coalition of U.S. allies to counter Islamic State militants is gradually taking shape. Ten Arab nations, including Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Egypt and Lebanon, have vowed to support the international coalition, which aims to ultimately destroy the extremist group. This pledge came on Thursday at a meeting of the nation's foreign ministers and U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry in the Saudi coastal city of Jeddah. Kerry stressed the critical role Arab nations play in the joint communique. They will have to provide military support, humanitarian aid, and ensure the flow of funds and foreign fighters to IS is cut off. And certainly the effort to repudiate once and for all the dangerous, the offensive, the insulting distortion of Islam that ISIL propaganda attempts to spread throughout the region and the world. Kerry also dismissed Russia's questioning of the legality of the coalition without prior UN Security Council authorization. He said that if the situation wasn't so serious in Ukraine, it would be amusing to think about Moscow raising the issue of international law. Washington's European allies have been offering their own forms of support. Germany says it's happy to provide weapons and ammunition. Britain and France have not ruled out joining U.S.-led military action in Iraq, but are wary about joining potential operations against IS positions in Syria. Here in Korea, Seoul's foreign ministry reiterated Thursday that an aid package worth $1.2 million will be sent to help Iraqis displaced by the crisis. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. And in other parts of the world, one week before Scotland votes on whether to break away from the United Kingdom, hundreds of thousands of Catalonians in Spain poured into the streets on Thursday calling for their own secession from Spain. Separatists in the autonomous community said they were committed to holding a referendum on November 9th, the day that Catalonia had become a province of the Spanish crown 300 years ago. The poll would be regarded as illegal by the Spanish government and will likely be blocked by the country's constitutional court. 
The verdict is in. Olympic and Paralympic track star Oscar uh, Pistorius has been cleared of all murder charges over the killing of his girlfriend, model Riva Steenkamp. The double amputee who admitted to shooting her dead through a bathroom door in February last year claimed he had mistaken her as an intruder. The presiding judge in the case says prosecutors failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Pistorius was guilty of premeditated murder. The former Olympian, however, could still be convicted of culpable homicide or manslaughter when sentencing resumes on Friday. Now, on a lighter note, Korea was a popular destination for Hollywood stars promoting their latest blockbusters last year. But this year, the A-listers have turned their backs on Seoul and are heading to China's biggest cities for the red carpet treatment. Our Park Ji-won explains why. From Tom Cruise in January and Robert Downey Jr. three months later to promote Iron Man 3, to Will Smith the following month and then Brad Pitt, Tilda Swinton and Chris Evans in the summer. The list of Hollywood actors making stops in Korea last year was long and star-studded. But this year's list is much shorter. Jackie Chan came in January to promote his Police Story sequel and Megan Fox visited in August. But beyond them, Korea's red carpet hasn't been graced by many Hollywood stars in 2014. That's because more of them are choosing China to promote their new films in the Asian market. Nicole Kidman, Hugh Grant, John Cusack and Natalie Portman have all visited China this year. Under the leadership of Xi Jinping, China is actively trying to open itself up in the realm of culture and is now much more accepting of Western cultures. This is leading more Hollywood stars to visit the huge Chinese market as they eye commercial success. In terms of box office revenue, China raked in some 3.6 billion U.S. dollars last year, making it the world's second largest behind North America. This year, the fourth installment of the Transformers series was a global hit with $1 billion box office revenue worldwide. About $160 million of that came from the Chinese market. It's a market that's expected to continue growing, which means the long line of Hollywood stars heading to China is expected to grow even longer in the years to come. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. Good afternoon and happy Friday everyone. I'm Michelle Park here with the latest weather forecast. It's a refreshing autumn day here in Seoul, although the highs will be reaching up to the high 20s today, but keep in mind that the temperatures are dropping overnight. And the entire nation is currently under cloudy skies due to a high pressure front from the north and that will continue throughout the day. And there's also chances of on and, on and off showers, uh, sudden showers rather, in Jeju Island and while sporadic showers are expected in the northwestern, eastern province of Gangwon-do. And over the weekend, we are expecting clear sunny skies nationwide with daytime highs into the high 20s. However, be aware of the huge temperature drops into the night and the mornings of 10 degrees. Now, going over to our temperature readings, Seoul will top out at 28 this afternoon. Meanwhile, the southern cities such as Gwangju and Busan 
will be lower, hitting up to 27 and 26 degrees. And now moving over to other regions, Jeju Island is at 26, while Tokyo and Mangkungang is cooler at 24 degrees. Now that's all for Korea. Now here's a look at the weather conditions around the world. And that's a wrap from us. Thank you for watching. I'll be back for early edition at 6 in about 90 minutes time.